order the Committee of the Whole on February 7th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Uh, ben, would you please call the roll? Member Orr? Here. Member Matheny? Here. Member Shroyer? Here. Member Warren? Here. Member McLeaster? Here. Members Wyrick and Revolt are absent, five present. Motion to excuse members uh, Revolt and Wyrick? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Let's see, Daryl's not here. Jamie, would you like to begin the discussion on your vice committee? Sure. Um, going to be talking about a parcel of property out on market, and I understand we have the applicants here. Did you guys wish to give us any further information on this? Or? Well, at this stage, we're happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. if there's anything specifically, but... Okay. Or would you like to give us some information or? Uh, yeah, well, I think uh, the intent here today is to refer to the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing that it also that the Planning Commission will turn something back, as you well know, I'm yes. the chair of the mm -hmm. But, um, you know, this is the area north of Washington Square along Market Avenue that is undeveloped. Uh, section there. By the Stark and, Parks Trail. Right, yeah. uh, east of the Stark Parks Trail, yep. And <clears throat> so um, the uh, developer was the uh, uh, the Altman brothers who acquired an interest in the property and are seeking to uh, rezone it from office building to general business B. So it was office building uh, previously because Altman Hospital no relation to the Altman brothers. It's spelled different. <laughs> uh, Altman Hospital owned it, and uh, there was time, I guess, in the last you know, decade or so that they thought of maybe opening a facility there at one time. Um, that is no longer in, in play for them. It hasn't been for some time. So they were looking to, they've been in the market to sell the property for quite some time. Um, the, you know, as far as, you know, working with, uh, administration, working with developers, I would have to say that the Altman brothers are the gold standard to work with and, uh, generally work on properties that, uh, they take great pride in maintaining and making sure that the types of uses are ones that are, uh, supported by the surrounding stakeholders. Uh, they've made, uh, uh concerted efforts in that regard to speak with stakeholders and to uh, explain to them their vision for this, this parcel. And uh, in addition uh, to meeting with uh, the administration, then uh, we expressed you know, some of our concerns uh, potentially uh, down the road, uh, should this property change hands in the future. Uh, they, they tend to uh, in their developments, um, hold on to the properties for a considerable period of time. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we took some extra precautions, spoke with them about certain deed restrictions that the city would be interested in having exercised on this parcel uh, to prevent it from turning over into something that they wouldn't want uh, either. I think they met with uh, the councilman from the ward. Uh, and so there's been, you know, this is the kind of thing that you want from your development team is being able to reach out at the appropriate time, and we're at that appropriate time. Um, you know, as far as the specific uses, you know, I think that's yet to finalize, but you know, uh, that would be something that'll be coming uh, you know, to the planning commission. So we're hoping that the council will uh, refer this over to the planning commission. We can start the process and get further details before it comes back. Okay, perfect. Thank you so very much uh, for the info. So do we have a any motion to move it to send it to the planning commission? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Uh, finance of property. Step. Okay. Uh, this is about $12,950 for some different law expenses and just an appropriation. Do you want to mention anything else regarding that? Uh, this was an unemployment assessment um, as part of the Ohio Shared Work Program yes. that we were assessed as being part of the history of that employer. Yeah. Interesting. 
Are we going to keep following up with that, or just? I am. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, appropriate counsel looking at this. Okay. And see sure. what's happening around Ohio. Yeah. It's so new. Right. Because, I mean, I hadn't obviously heard about it, and I'm an expert in that field, but it just didn't hit me exactly right. And a couple of us had talked about that, and it didn't make sense, but. Okay. Yeah, so we may have an update for you at the next meeting. Okay, that's great. Okay, so I'll move to uh, move it on. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, <coughs> John? Go to your ordinance and rules committee. Yeah, we're. Uh, this is about redistricting the the wards. Uh, we have two plans up here: the current map and then the new map. Um, it's not going to change all that much um, with the new map. Uh, I really uh, think it, we should go with that. It's redistrict. We should have probably done this in what, 1972. Well, we should have done it in 2010. The last yeah, the, the 2010, the... but it hasn't been redistricted for quite some time. It's based on the population, not registered voters. So it's from a, the census of the last of the last uh, the last census it was out. So we're redistricting. It's more balanced. Um, I think we're within just a couple percentages of, of the large schools. Less than 2%. Less than 2%. So I think we should uh, move on this. It makes us all a lot more even. Yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change too much. Right. Really. <clears throat> all right. I move to move forward. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to adjourn. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned. Pause. Uh, <laughs> to get caught up for the next meeting here. If you don't want to stay for the whole meeting, you're more than welcome. If you stay for the reader presentation, then you might get party favors. <laughs> 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 I now call to order the regular council meeting on February 27th, or February 7th, 2022. The time is 7.08. Opening prayer. All right, let us pray. Lord, as we gather here this evening to contemplate items that have come before us for the betterment of our city, please help us to be smart and wise and uh, do the work of our fellow citizens in an appropriate manner. Please be with us and thank you. Amen. All right, Ben, would you please call the roll? Member McLeister? Here. Member Warren? Here. Member Stroya? Here. Member Matheny? Here. Member Orr? Here. Member Schweier? Member Volt are absent. Five present. Okay. Motion to second to approve as per. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yep. Second. Yeah, motion. Yep. And second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. For consideration, uh, do you have a motion and a second to approve as presented uh, the list minutes from January 24th, 2022, the public hearing, minutes from January 24th, 2022, the Committee of the Whole, 
and the minutes from January 24, 2022, City Council. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, at this time, we uh, will have uh, recognition of the public. Um, those wishing to address council may do so. Each speaker will be granted five minutes. Please begin by saying your name and address for the record. As a reminder, the rules are posted on the screen and a violation is ground for your termination of your speaking privileges. Warren 307 Frederick Street, Southeast, North Canton, Ohio. I'm here to speak on the proposed uh, zone change. And I was waiting to see who up here was going to recognize in your packet that you have errors regarding the parcel number. The parcel number was entered wrong in at least three or four different locations. It took me 10 or 15 minutes to try and figure out what was going on. Well, that tells me nobody's looked at this very closely. Uh, a change from OB to general business B opens the Pandora box to what can be done with that property. And here's, I'm just going right down to our zoning. It now allows business equipment and supplies. Studios for instruction in a condition. Drive through facilities with a permitted use. Oh, I take that back. Studios for instructions go from a conditional to a permitted use. Dry clean counter service. Furniture, home furnishing, office equipment, office supplies, motels, hotels, mainstream media shop, photographic reproduction services, restaurants. Outdoor dining, self-service laundry facility, veterinary hospitals associated with cages, runs, kennels, adult uses, I don't know what that would actually be, parking as a principal use, lot or garage, vehicle and farm implement sales, lease and or rental facility, car wash, gasoline station, automobile service stations, those would, those would be allowed with conditional use. Vehicle repair facility, that's a permitted use. Clubs, lodges, and other assembly halls. Civic facility for public assembly. Daycare for facility for adults and children. Indoor recreational facility. Outdoor commercial re recreation. Motion picture and theatrical playhouse. Places of worship. School, public and, or private. Business and trade schools. Frankly, I would like to know what the plans are before anything is, the horses are let out of the barn here. This property is backed up by residential. Each of you are elected representatives. You should be advocating for the citizenry. How long was this discussed or presented? Granted, it's going to the Planning Commission. We'll come back. But nobody's laying out concerns. The Pandora box or whatever you want to put up, put up there would be allowed. So I'm going to keep it short. Not a single soul noticed that the parcel numbers was wrong in like three or at least three locations. Thank you. My name is Rita Palmer, 307 Fairview Street, North Canton, and I've been confused with Rita Palmer. I think they're coming up next. <laughs> um, I would like to respond to the comments made by Daryl Revolt and Stephanie Warren at the January 24th, 2022 council meeting after Larry Tripp and my husband Chuck Osborne spoke at Public Speaks. I was surprised that at that meeting, 
Mr. Revolt broke council rule number 39 when he did not ask the presiding president of council for permission to respond with a prepared statement to a citizen who spoke at public speaks and then further violated rule number 32G to avoid, quote, defamatory or slanderous language, end quote. But just the same, allow me to continue. In Chuck's speech that night, he did not say that the current council clerk was an idiot and a fool, to quote Mr. Revolt. Nor did he label Mr. Young as incompetent and unintelligent. Daryl, who's not here, but I will speak to him as though he were, you were wrong to attribute these words to my husband. To the contrary, Mr. Young has solid educational credentials. But by way of an analogy, Mr. Young, with his degree, probably could not safely fly an airplane unless he were trained by a pilot, such as my husband, to do so. It is equally difficult for him to now serve as a clerk without having had specific job training from a clerk. Training which you, as a council, considered for him, but which was canceled by COVID. This inadequacy, however, despite being true, does in no way impugn Mr. Young's innate skills or mentality. So now I'm led to ask, how did Daryl Revolt become a medical professional in the mental health field without graduating medical school? On January 24th, he publicly diagnosed my husband and by implication Larry Tripp, with help from Stephanie Warren, as having a psychological disorder called Munchausen syndrome by proxy because these two men have dared to speak to council regularly on issues important to North Canton citizens, but which the council, or at least these two council members, simply do not care about. Mr. Revolt, you had no right to publicly humiliate these gentlemen while pretending to be not a doctor of history, but a doctor of play medicine. If you were a real medical doctor, you would know that what you said, besides being untrue, is a violation of HIPAA privacy laws. If this council and you as director of economic development have difficulty finding citizens to run for office or serve or move their businesses into the city, then you have nowhere to look but at yourselves. As citizens at this podium who regularly exercise their democratic right to speak are subjected to being embarrassed, publicly shamed, and now slanderously diagnosed by a non-medical professional, no matter what damage is done to the character and reputation of these North Canton City residents. Mr. Revolt, you said these negative characterizations in this chamber need to stop. They do. Beginning with you and Mrs. Warren. Defamation of character is a tort or a civil wrong. You need to stop belittling and defaming all citizens. We North Canton voters have a right to speak our peace without harassment. We voted you into office to listen and use our ideas to better the city. But you do not have a right to put words in our mouths, snicker at us, or characterize us as having mental deficiencies. You can and you must do better. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address council tonight? Okay. Floor is closed. Moving on to the special presentation by uh, Brian for Rita. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, 
wanted to uh, thank uh, Mayor Wilder and uh, Director Olivac and the council for inviting myself, Brian Thunder, and John Tuesday coming to to speak with you with regards uh, to Rita. Um, I understand that um, uh, Councilman McLeaster, uh, Councilman McLean, uh, Councilman Raywood, Raywood, and Councilman Moore are new, so I wanted to say Congratulations and welcome to the council. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that everybody on council understands what Reed is about. And if, again, if you have any questions about uh, what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight, please just uh, stop or yell or throw up at me, whatever you get to prefer. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer. But uh, we do have a short presentation here. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about the city of North Canton. We're going to talk a little bit about what Rita does for North Canton and how we're able to assist uh, North Canton throughout the year. So, um, obviously, uh, the first. <laughs> Did you turn it on, then? There we go. Okay. Uh, for, uh, this is a little brief presentation. <laughs> is a regional council of governments. Uh, we are currently we have over municipalities that we need to get from the state of Ohio. We are member we are managed by a nine member board of trustees. Uh, as a matter of fact, each year um, we have a staggering term for those uh, members of trustees. So anybody within the administration, uh, whether it be Director Alabac or whether it be Mayor Wilder uh, can also um, run for uh, a board seat uh, to be on the board. Uh, our board meets once a month. Uh, it's the third Thursday of every month. And we are also overseeing the daily operations are overseen by Don Smith, who is our executive director. <coughs> we do cover approximately 50% of the municipalities in the state of Ohio. So there's about 900-ish municipalities that are in Ohio. Um, and then it also includes some townships. So we, we, we're about 360 strong right now. Um, we are actually bringing out a couple more municipalities that are in um, the area itself. So currently, um, as we speak in Stark County, North Canton is the Ola Reed member currently. However, um, we're looking to partner with other municipalities that uh, are in this area. Last year, 2021, Rita collected $1.9 billion, B, $1 billion in local income tax for all of our communities, uh, which is a new record for us. Also, as well, we have opened up a new office, which is down in Xenia, Ohio. We do have our Brexco location, which is our HQ, and our Worthington office down in Columbus, Youngstown, Cleveland Heights. And again, I just mentioned that we have opened up where? In Xenia, Ohio which is a southwest um, it's right outside of Cincinnati and kind of between that Cincinnati thing and uh, the matter of fact just a little bit west of Xenia uh, we have uh, partners with the city of Hamilton uh, they just came on board here in 2017. The next couple of slides I'm not going to bother going through every single one of these but this is our full service really is a full service tax collection agency from registration through litigation a couple of things I wanted to highlight in your packets. Um, on the bottom, we have about what we, it's, it's newer, it's called W 2 Matching. So essentially, what we do is we are able to take the W 2 employers and W 2s. We take those and we bounce them up against our tax system. So if you have a resident, um, let's say that you work in Barberton, I know it's a little bit ways away, but let's say that they work in Barberton and they reside in North Canton, we're able to retrieve those W 2s as the legally required to file uh, the W-2s at the end of the year. We take those W-2s and we match it against our tax system. So say um, John Smith works at a company up there and they reside here, we can take them and file the returns on their behalf. So we don't necessarily need them to file the return, which is a great thing that we've been able to do over the past couple of years. Uh, one of the other things that we have is modern access file, if any of uh, the modern ID file is, is that we partner with about half a dozen different software providers to electronically file your tax returns for your constituents. So if you go to a nationwide block and they use um, Blockworks, for example, Blockworks will not only file their federal and their state return, but it will also file their North Camp return for them as well. 
Um, there's a list that we'll get into that has other uh, some of the other partners that we have. And again, um, we have the modernized file for net profit. So businesses can do that too if they have a CPA firm that filed their taxes for them. Um, they can also file their corporate tax for them. Uh, there is no um, agency in the state of Ohio that has modernized e files for both, for both, or both and net profit. And then last but never least is our federal tax information. Uh, as you may or may not know, Greenan does receive um, data extracts from the IRS. We've been receiving those for approximately 10 years right now, and it was literally a act of Congress that we are able to receive the information. Under the IRS code, RITA is recognized as a state, and the state with the species system has a population of more than 200,000, 250,000 people. Um, so we lobbied down at the in DC, we were able to get this passed. And again, uh, we are able to receive those data extracts. So again, we take that data information that we receive from the IRS, we bounce it up against our tax system, and what we're looking for is we're looking for people who may have not filed a full return. Maybe they forgot a W-2, or maybe they have unreported income, such as Schedule C income for a business that, they're, that they have out of their home, or maybe they have rental income that they did not uh, put on their tax return. So those, we use that. Um, Every day. That's again, it's included in the services that we provide to all of our municipalities. Again, um, these are just rudimentary uh, types of services that we have data to the game, reference extension, so on and so forth. And again, this again is just our tax uh, our, our tax compliance systems, our risk response systems, uh, data warehouse maintenance. Uh, so on and so forth. And again, uh, another list of services. There's about four to five services, regular services that are everything that is included in this cost that we provide to the city of North Canada. One of the last things that I did highlight here is the administrative subpoena. We used to do subpoena programs on a regular basis where we would come out to the municipalities and have seen the folks come out. Uh, so the taxpayer would get a non filing notice. In response to another final notice, we would issue another administrative subpoena and have them appear at a date, time, and location within the city itself. Um, COVID came a couple of years ago. So, what we've been able to do is we've been able to transition that on site, um, that on site uh, work that we used to do, and now we've been able to do it virtually. That's why the subpoena is a whole new policy. And even when the subpoenas were $8 before, because that would cover the cost of everything, I've never seen a subpoena program never um, pay for itself. Um, they're, very, they're very successful for the businesses, or for the individuals and also the businesses. But again, if it's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to make sure that the city of North Canton is receiving the dollars that are paid to them from every taxpayer, whether it be an individual or business. These were the software providers that I had talked about earlier. Um, you may recognize some of them, and if you are preparers yourself, maybe you do use these different types of uh, software. So that way, um, again, they all file online. So again, they're federal, they're state, and they're local and they're online. And again, we have the dictionary. And again, we also have our e file service. We have fast file. Uh, our fast file service is something that's been it's newer, it's about a year and a half old. And what that is, you don't need any login credentials. If you're just a W-2 individual, you can log on to readohio.com. You can put in your information. You can securely e-file your material without using login credentials. Um, but again, only for W-2 users. And I believe that there is a maximum amount of W-2 on there as well. We have the PDF. Uh, fill, in, fill in forms if you're not an electronic type of person. You can use computers, or we also have our forms that we do send out to our municipalities as well. Some incentives that I wanted to talk about, um, we talk about registration for litigation, and the city of North Canton partakes in all of our services, and it's been very, very well um, received by the city, and since 2016, the North Canton came on board uh, in uh, adding accounts Year after year, as you can see, that we've had the 1,200 accounts each of the last three years. 
And again, this is with the using the using the higher ed structure, which we're using every tool that we have to identify new taxpayers for the city. E filing. Everybody likes to e file. I think that's one of the major things that people have been in the community. Into whether it be, you know, doing banking online or whether it be um, doing other things that are online. Everything's online. Everybody else has something they've done as far as being online. So, again, uh, what we're doing is that our submissions or your submissions are well over 6,000 every single year. Um, you have about 11,000 taxpayers that are filing tax returns that are legitimate taxpayers. So, that's about 50%. Of all of your taxpayers are using our high file system and our e file system. Um, as you can see, the dollars that are associated with M2, uh, with a city that's around $7 million, um, $5 million is about um, what we're getting in electronic filing. So, again, almost 70% of what we're receiving from the city of North Canton is by electronic filing. So, I think if your citizens, if your business are using the i file application, the best of their abilities. Some of the other programs that the city of North Canton is uh, involved in, and we talked a little bit about the subpoena program, and we can tell here that we had identified $300,000 in liabilities and we collected $107,000. Now, again, I don't think that, and, and again, anything that we haven't collected, those folks are going to payment plans, they're going through the collection process itself. So, again, the subpoena program, the delinquent programs are very successful for the city of Canton, as well as the uh, federal tax information. And again, we've identified about $34,000 in liability, and we collect about $25,000 in which the city would have never seen the city before. So, again, we're looking at not necessarily the amount of money, but the identifying of the taxpayers and it's every little dollar that belongs to the city of North Canton and what we're trying to uh, so that you're receiving. Last but not least is our funding program. So we do file lawsuits in uh, court for your taxpayers. So essentially what happens is a taxpayer um, who has filed a return, they didn't pay their return, they receive a couple of billing notices that go out, we try to contact them, we try to set them up on a payment program, in the event that they fail to do either or they satisfy that balance, then we will file a small claims uh, judgment. So we've gone to court. Last year, we did.
We talked a little bit about COVID. These are some numbers that I had put together um, that uh, I know that might be of interest to you. I this morning. Um, we were talking about work from home. So that's a big topic right now. It's our hybrid schedule and what companies are doing, what we have to do. Um, we have that uh, all of our um, city reach out to employers. City of Edison, we have some type of change in the building. Um, I have been able to suggest all of our kids out of the city to be able to do it. However, there are some companies that are going to hybrid schedule. I know we do it for the next We have gone to a full hybrid schedule. And our payroll department is now, um, it's uh, two days in the office and three days at home. So that is how we're being recalled on currently. So when you're talking about hybrid schedules, there are municipal companies that are using dollars for hybrid schedules. So um, in the uh, large community has you know a lot of different businesses. Some of those folks want to outsource back to their home. The benefactors are going to be the other communities, the surrounding communities, who are campus in the world. But we don't know what's all going to happen. So what we've been trying to do is try to determine what or how this could impact your particular community. So I did a little bit of research and I said, okay, you know, what, how is North Canton comprised? I can tell you that 72% of North Canton residents work outside of the city. I can also tell you that 27 people live and work in the city. So we have a lot of people that get very little uh, from a statistic standpoint that work outside of your community. So some of those people that work outside your community may not be working in hybrid schedule. And how those tax dollars may not go to your community that's given those points. Those are the some of the things that we're going to be tracking this year and some of the things that we're going to be looking at this year, seeing what types of increases in income that the city that they could be. Um, on the plus side, too, as well, 
the only question I would have, and I, it, it's, I love, I haven't seen the presentation for so long. I don't know, have we been here recently? Not since I've been here. Okay, and so when I was on council, when we, when we first decided to go to this, and I remembered, <laughs> do you remember, Patrick? Who was it? That that then we started with. Okay. And you know, we're going to right? Come back to these. I mean, amount of time, you know, expect to do. And then we look at, wait a second, we're going to get this first money back. Okay, this is a good win. How can we not do this? And when you start to see the revenue that then we are collecting, I mean, it's just such a great tool when we have that for our community. And then, can you just talk a little bit about, like, how you see that partnership benefiting our community and how, like, the city is actually the event for your team? And maybe how you would have to allocate people to what that could you in another district. And you're not in this role. Yeah, I think one of the biggest benefits is the legal piece to it because they have a team. Yeah. (laughs) The legislation has changed so dramatically in the past couple of years, and the deadlines, the filing deadlines change, and the rules are changing. And, you know, there are so many new rules that I don't, you don't, you have to be an expert. And so we hire the experts. And so I feel very comfortable with them administering our taxes and the collection of our taxes, um, it's like the Stark County Auditor doing the property taxes. Right. You know, that's mm-hmm. what they're good at. That is their niche. And so the reports, uh, you saw just a snippet of the, te- the dashboard that we have when we log in. The reports are right there at the fingertips. And if I can't find something or I don't know where it lives, I just call or text Brian. I say, you help finding this, and within five minutes, I have it. I mean, their customer service is just so accessible and very good and their system is easy to use so you know we may get a few phone calls from either accountants or individuals or new businesses that come and we direct them to the website or give them the phone number and they don't call back because mm-hmm. they're you know they get their questions answered and they get the help they need right. so it's been a really positive relationship thank you for sure when i saw all the graphs and all the colors that <laughs> actually presents things to us and we just love it because it makes it so that we can follow and understand and and uh then one of Gina's gifts because it really has helped us all, I think, understand the process and the need to present it was the same. So thank you. And again, I <laughs> and it was, you know, I knew it was going to be a great opportunity for both of us, and the partnership has been, uh, has been great, and, you know, we have a great working relationship with Dr. Alabama, and, you know, the rest of the administration. Question on the, uh, the handling of work from home, the hybrid schedule that you're referring to, since your opinion at 1.5%, 2020 is where uh, when, uh, when COVID came into play and Governor DeLong was at the state of Ohio in a state of emergency. So essentially, all of the employers of 2020 were continuing to hold for their primary place in the community. Okay, so let's just say 
let's just do the Bible team for example. Yeah, Bible team for <laughs> Let's just say that their uh, their primary place of employment was in Barberton, and their place of residence is here in the camp. In 2020 and in 2021, continue to look for that primary place of employment. So if the taxpayer can demonstrate the time that they did not spend in Barberton and what was spent here in North Camp, they are they can request a refund except for 2020. That's actually still tied up in court in Franklin County Court. And we probably won't even hit that those will be probably heard until July of this year. They'll probably go to the House of Court very easily uh, uh, get to the post right now. But that's for 2020. Now, in 2021, since the state of Ohio is coming out of the state of emergency, if you can demonstrate that you did work in Barberton maybe 50% of the time, 50% of the time in North Camp, which is it easy, then they are able to request a refund. However, they still owe the dollars to North Camp. So, um, you know, again, it could be beneficial to the employee whether they would want to do that. Is it required that the company do that in 2020, 2021? No. Is it required that they do the 2022? Only if they're working at high risk schedule. So if it's not a mandate that they have to do it this year, um, now the simplicity of it, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I do know that there are probably several companies that is located in the Cleveland area have made that uh, painful change to municipalities where they have hundreds of individuals that work in the community and they're all the work there. So some of those communities are going to be hit pretty hard by that. However, it could be other surrounding communities that are going to be beneficial for them. Um, so I guess the answer to the question is they can do it in 2021 because that's a good one. 2020 is tied to the short period and not the question is And moving in 2022, most companies have already made a decision on what they're going to do. So that's why a few months ago we reached out to our community and said, why don't you contact the contact and see what they're doing? So if they are maybe manufacturing, for example, you can't manufacture something you know, somewhere else. You have to be on site. But if you have a lot of profit going on, or if you have a lot of those types of training and people that come in and out, then yeah, then you probably want to go with their community back to the market for what they're going to do. I've got a question. You mentioned uh, tracking a hybrid schedule. How does Rita track any of the company's hybrid schedules? We can't. So what we have done, and um, what we've done, what we've done is we've asked our municipalities to reach out to their top employers to see if they're doing anything. One thing that we do do internally is when a, an employer files their withholding taxes for a particular month. We use an algorithm that determines if it's outside of particular variance. So, for example, if you're consistently filing a thousand dollars every single month, and all of a sudden in January of February of 2022, it's going to make 20 bucks, it's going to flag the account, and we're going to stop the processing. But we're going to send a taxpayer letter saying, well, this is not typical of what you've been doing. So, that way, that's an award. That we can go back to the municipality and say, hey, by the way, this year, you know, we've got to do this for the past two years. They've been on top of this year, they've been changing for the program so much because it's not as consistent as it was to get past the months. That's the, probably the best way I can make an answer to that question. I mean, outside of the fluctuations from the million dollars, there's really no way for us to go door to door and ask every company what they're doing. Because every company is going to have been a little bit better. Uh, truthfully, um, you know, there are some people that are doing a hybrid schedule for six months. Some people are you know, only doing it for three months. Some people are doing it for a fifth year. So, what we're trying to do on our end is to see those functionations within the economy and make an educated determination based off of that. There will be a requirement of employer certification on the days worked out or days worked from home, away from the office, I think. <laughs> If you, if an employee is requ is requiring a re, or I'm sorry, requesting a refund from the city of North Canton or whatever city it is, the employer has to certify those days not worked in the office. 
the employee just can't say I worked 50 percent here and 50 percent there. It'll require a certification from the employer. So employers really do need to have a way of tracking that. Sure. Will Rita make the adjustment from the higher paid to the other one, or does the individual have to pay the tax to move in and then wait for a refund from the other city? I mean, there would be no incentive to, to file if I'm going to have to pay more and move. Well, and, and again, that's the interesting thing, because it's going to be a very good time to do this. Because after all of that situation, that you know, the employer has to certify. So if, if I work in a, let's say I work in a, a, a 1% or in a 1.5% community, but I've done all my work in my home community, which is a part of 1.5%, there's no benefit to me as an individual. It's just moving dollars from one mm -hmm. town to another municipality. People that you're going to see fall into a couple of categories. One being, if you worked in a municipality and reside in a township, well, if I work in a 2% community, I live in a township, I would like all my money back. I, I, I live in a township. So, you know, then I would be a, a classic piece of, I would file for those day now refunds um, for Rexville from 2021 because I can split the time in 2021 working with Rexville. Um, you know, the other, <coughs> the other category that, that would be impactful is, uh, you know, Adjustment, or is it still pay and wait for refund? It is going to well. They're going to file their return. They're going to they're going to request their refund. Well, they're going to request their refund first. In most cases, I would think so. Then what will happen is because when we do give a refund, it's going to be 1099 for the following year. Now they could file the return this year. Um, they could pay their Essentially, the taxpayer is eligible and has a certified refund from their employer, therefore, we're required to do this. Thank you. I just wanted to double check. Um, as far as the process for for an employee, did they contact Rita? But it sounds to me like they have to go to their HR department or payroll department, whatever, and get the ball rolling there that, hey, I am working at home three days a week. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. And then back to, you know, Mr. Matheny's point, and I think what we were talking about earlier, this really comes down to public education, too. I mean, again, if it's, as you said, one and a half to one and a half, no big deal. But if you're working in a city that's say two and a half percent i mean i wonder if people really realize that this is a benefit that they could receive again how much is it but then again i'm cheap so you know I'd, i'll take every dollar i can get back from the government so uh you know it's i think we need to get the word out on this is my point i think some larger communities um are probably mm -hmm. there and it's going to they're gonna lose yes Correct. so i don't see uh you know, a date or a Cincinnati or a Toledo saying, hey, by the way, we got all this money here for you. You know, come mm -hmm. and get your refund. I don't think right. that's going to be the case. Uh, but like I said, uh, what I think is going to be the case are the people that are at least knowledgeable enough to know that they have a hybrid schedule. Mm -hmm. The employer has acknowledged that they have a hybrid schedule. If the employer is able to make those adjustments, I think it's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. Brian, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you both. You're very welcome. And again, 
Um, I have uh, my card in this, so anybody, if you have any questions, you can just feel free to email um, yourself or email and so on. Um, just again, you know, we are part of the I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, well, you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, let's move on to old business. Um, in a motion and a second to read by title only, Ordinance 70 2021. So moved. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ben? An ordinance amending various sections of the City of North Canton zoning code and adding thereto new definitions and establishing a new chapter in order to establish a source water protection area and provide for the regulation of substances for the protection of groundwater resources within the source water protection area. John, I believe this is me. Nope. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. yep. That's right. Um, we've talked about this in the past. Um, this is just uh, creating the source water protection that will protect our drinking water. And um, I don't know if there's any other questions or thoughts. I, I would move that we uh, move forward with the second reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to Ordinance 72-2021. Uh, motion and a second to read by title only. Ordinance 72-2021. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> An ordinance amending Chapter 1136, Main Street District's Regulation, specifically Section 1136.05, Schedule of Permitted Uses of the Codified Ordinance of the City of North Canton to change drive-through facilities to a conditional use in the Main Street South Zoning District. Okay, normally this would be Daryl. Daryl is not here, so Jamie, would you like to? Sure. Yes. Okay. This is another one that we've talked about uh, in the past. This is uh, to create uh, drive-throughs in the Main Street South Zoning District. Um, or, uh, excuse me, it'd be a conditional use in the Main Street South Zoning District. There is a, an entity that is coming into a building down in, uh, in this district, and they would like to have a drive-through. So um, I don't know if there's any other thoughts. That's where uh, George's was, right? George's, yeah, That's correct. Okay. Yep. So, so I'd move that we adopt or move forward with the second reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> okay, moving on to uh, 01 2022. Motion is second to read by title only. Ordinance 01 2022. So, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, Ben. An ordinance amending Chapter 159, Records and Archives Commission, specifically Section 159.01, Commission Created Member of the Codified Ordinances of the City of North Canton to adjust the membership thereof. Okay. We will write this. This is removing your name, Matt, from, from yep. those ordinances. We've had two other readings on this. Is there any questions? Is there anything? Mm -hmm. Make a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to Ordinance 2-2022. Can I get a motion and a second to read by title only Ordinance 2-2022? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ben? An ordinance amending Chapter 741, Adult Cabaret Businesses of the Codified Ordinances of the City of North Canton, to update the definition of adult cabaret. We've had two readings on this, and um, we need to vote on this um, in favor of this. Uh, we need to find this. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to Ordinance 3-2022. Can I get a motion and a second to read by title only Ordinance 3-2022? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, Ben. An ordinance amending Chapter 1739, Violations and Abatement of the Codified Ordinances of the City of North Canton, specifically Section 1739.01 and 1739.03, to allow for the expedited abatement of noxious weeds and rank vegetation. Yeah. Again, we've had two readings on this. This is the weed uh, where it would take like 30 days, how it's written now. They would expedite it to like two weeks or under on this. So uh, I'll take a motion and pass this. So moved. Let's get this done. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, can I get a motion and a second to read by title only ordinance 04 2022? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ben? An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of North Canton to release the maintenance bond agreement between the city and McKinley Applegrove Limited regarding improvements to be maintained in the sanctuary development phase four. Okay, street and alley is me. Um, the, uh, this has been um, basically achieved all their, their goals and uh, the bond is ready to be released. This is our third, re no, second reading. Um, third. Third. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, third reading. Um, I move to adopt. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, can I get a motion and a second to read by title only, Ordinance 5 2022? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ben? An ordinance amending Chapter 907, Street Excavations, of the codified ordinances of the City of North Canton in order to establish separate processes for minor and major street excavations. Okay, this is a third reading of this. Uh, we had a gentleman, Mr. Elsass, come and put a presentation um, explaining what he thought he, he uh, overpaid. And from that... Uh, Two processes were made for major and minor excavations. Um, I think we've covered this in detail, and I think it's very good for the community. Um, it, proves I mean, we listen, it proves that we listen to. Yes, that. absolutely, it does. Yeah. During the public right. And yep. make presentations. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yep. Make a motion. Yep. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, can I get a motion and a second to read by title only ordinance 58-2021? So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ben? Motion yeah. carries, sorry. Ben. An ordinance amending chapter 1133, single family and two family residential district regulation, specifically subsection 1133.08D, swimming pool, and Chapter 1707, Swimming Pools, Spas, and Hot Tubs, specifically Section 1707.01b of the Codified Ordinances of the City of North Canton to lower the minimum required height of fencing for swimming pools to four feet. Okay, Daryl's not here. Uh, Jamie, would you like to comment on this? Sure. Um, this is another item that we've uh, talked about. Uh, it's been to Planning Commission and it's come back. We've had a public hearing. Um, basically what it is, is I think this came from Mark Serretta, uh, former Councilman Serretta, and this was in regards to lowering the height of the fences to make it more of a standard item as opposed to a special order item. So um, I think it's been thoroughly vetted and I would move that we uh, move forward with the first reading. Still, oh, do you no. like to talk about it? <laughs> 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 Remember how I use it as an example? Like, when are we done with the dancing? Uh -huh. Well, we got at least another two. Yeah, at least a few more meetings. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, I'm. Back to planning just one more time. Yeah. If you want to. So, um, I'm. I move that we adopt this. Put it on I get a second for that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to department reports. Uh, let's go with Rob. Okay. Uh, no report tonight, Mr. President. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gina? No report. Gotcha. Uh, I'd just like to bring the council up to speed on the uh, snow removal efforts. So it was a 
uh, you know, obviously a Herculean task over the last couple of weeks to get to a point to keep the streets clean. Uh, you know, we have had a snow removal plan that uh, since you know, 30 years mapped out what to do as personnel changes. Uh, we stick to the plan, tweak it as needed, uh, and it works in our community very well. Now, unfortunately, this go around, we've had a record amount of snow. It's been, you know, such a very long time since we had this kind of snow. And so our priorities, you know, are to get the snow off the streets first. And uh, what the crews are doing now, now that we've got a decent forecast here and we have some time, uh, they're going around the city and working on the uh, corners where the snow is piled up and, you know, uh, redistributing some of that, tapping those down to try to increase visibility for, for motors. So uh, it's an ongoing process. It'll probably take you know a week or so to get those all done. Uh, I was out uh, surveying the city myself today, uh, helping to spot some of those uh, areas that need you know, some attention. So uh, we, you know, bear with us you know, on that. We receive a lot of calls uh, during the course of the day uh, with uh, from residents who are reporting some of these trouble spots for us. So we appreciate that. That's my report. Thank you. Uh, Mayor? Yes, thank you, uh, Patrick, for giving all that. So that's what I was going to say for the most part. <laughs> but uh, And it's probably expected. But uh, the most of all, I want to thank our residents for their patience as we went to clean our streets and then our, eventually our side streets. And... Uh, when you get snowfalls like this, sometimes the snow only has, we can only put it in certain places. And uh, for those that have uh, cleaned a fire hydrant in front of their house, thank you very much. I don't want you to go out and have a heart attack, but, you know, it, just a resident, if they would do that, they would help our fire department out just immensely when we get snowfalls like this. And I have seen residents, and I went out myself uh, in my neighborhood and had as many as I could. So, uh, just announce the safety news. And, uh, you know, we're, we'll get through this winter, but uh, everybody has to be patient, and we'll just continue to do the best we job we can. Uh, kudos to our, our personnel. They put in long hours. And uh, uh, for our first responders to get to where they've got to go, uh, I think our, our response to anything that happened over this last two weeks has, has been well, well received. So. And, again, as the, Mr. Diorio said, that there's a issue, whether it's a mailbox or something else or, or a site uh, a condition in your neighborhood, just give us a call. We put our work orders in, and I think our team uh, uh, gets out there very quickly to address that issue. So thank you for the time. And, uh, I thought the presentation tonight, too, from uh, Rita was very worthwhile. It's a good refreshment. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Um, yes, this, for those of you who weren't there, the Charter Commission had its kickoff or organizational or whatever you'd like to call first meeting, um, and they just, it has been decided they'll meet on the second Tuesday of each month here at 5 p.m. right before council meeting, and we're going to start the meeting in February will be all those amendments that were submitted relating to Article 2 of the Charter, which was about half, and then this Next meeting in March will be all the others, which was about the other half. So you're all welcome to come. There is a public speech for them. You can share your ideas. Thank you. Second Monday of each month at 2 p.m. So, or 5 p.m., sorry. Uh, February 14th, March 14th. April 11th and May 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with... Boy, and I was just sitting here thinking as he was talking about that meeting at 5 o'clock on the 14th and council meeting at 7 o'clock. We're really loading up Valentine's Day. So uh, <laughs> for the married ones here, uh, okay. <laughs> Um, I digress. Um, I really don't have too much of a report other than to just uh, echo what you gentlemen said about the, the cleanup and just uh, you know, thank the, the workers who are out there uh, cleaning the roads. I think that they, um, you know, as always, they were very clean and 
able to be traveled. So beyond that, I, and thanking the folks from Rita, um, I don't have anything else to share. Thank you. Uh, David? Well, I'd like to put a thank you out there to Ben. One of the challenges is always communication, communication to the residents of North Canton. Uh, thank you for the council bulletin. Thank you for putting together and putting out there in front of everybody. I strongly su suggest that if you're not out there on the North Canton, Ohio website, you get out there, sign up, get this information. I guess we've also got a Twitter account. I am not a Twitter person. <laughs> it kind of eludes me and flies away. <laughs> Uh, but subscribe to that information. Uh, reach out to the, uh, the North Canton's Facebook page. We're working very hard to keep that communication going. And this council bulletin actually spells out the ordinances and explain that. So thank you again for coming out. Okay. NorthCantonOhio.gov slash subscribe. Okay. Right. Um, just another repeat, but Thank you. Like you said, I will echo. I will echo what you just said. And great thought about the communication again, and that's what readers about. And even saying the, uh, the fire hydrant, I did see that, and I was, and I asked myself, am I supposed to do that? So thank you. I, I will do that. Um, you just brought up a good point. Then it was thanking Ben for doing something he was doing differently. And when I listened to Mrs. Palmer's um, remarks today, um, who is Mr. Osborne's wife. Um, I, I guess what hit me is this is a different job that we've created. And I think that was kind of the impetus of um, one of our members' remarks last week and kind of saying, hey, enough is enough. We've looked at things and we're going to look at them differently. And his job title is differently. And, and we are a council that allows people to possibly make some mistakes and learn from them and hopefully grow and do things maybe differently and, and better in the future. Um, and when I think she commented that maybe people are running for office because of comments from us. And it can go to both ways for sure. I definitely know that people have said to me, there's no way that I would run based on what people say to you and to Mike. And I said, well, that's part of running. You have to have a thick skin. If you want to be the public guy, you're going to have to take some of the insults that come with that. And that's totally fine. Um, but I was, I was looking at some previous notes and I had written these down before. And um, I think when people say, you know, the way council's running is indefensible and it's it's in a, it's um, illogical and where is the decider in chief and make yourself known and who's making these decisions um when you kind of have those kind of comments um why in the middle of covid would anyone think it was a good idea to hold meetings in such an inadequate and unfunctional room those are purposely targeted remarks and they may not be said with a name but trust me, we are smart enough to know who every single one of these remarks is made for. And so I think as a council and sometimes individuals, we will take note of that and we will defend our, our people in that regard. And and I am sorry if Mr. Osborne's feelings were hurt with that. Um, I, I will stand by, you know, I, I didn't care about the numbering system and you had met with numerous people and you made comments in about six different emails about that numbering system. and. We can, uh, you, we can definitely agree to disagree on that. But I will say, and Mrs. Palmer talked about being an expert, you can fly a plane. You're an expert in that field. But I don't think that you're an expert in a clerk role. And I'm not sure even Ben is at that point. He's learning. But you're not an expert in legislation, and you're not an expert in numbering systems. And, and, and that's okay. But we can agree to do it differently. And I guess it caused so much attention to that. Um, it just wasn't on my agenda. And again, we can have different agendas. So, um, but I, I can definitely, if anybody ever wants to see, I can pull the emails and we can see who they're talking to about different things. But um, I don't, I think it's just a, a time where we were just disagreeing. So that's it. And I hope we'll continue to do things differently as a city. I mean, it's a perfect example of that and making a lot of money. <laughs> All right, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, John? Well, uh, kudos to the street department. They did a great job. Um, we passed that nuisance law tonight uh, regarding the weeds. Well, we sort of have a weed in the wintertime. It's the sidewalks. I took numerous calls about our sidewalks. Now would be a great time to go up and down Main Street. Some do a great job. Some don't do any job at all. Now would be a good time to maybe get some letters out and following up because uh, those sidewalks need to happen. Get done. Um, we 
when the school stopped certain areas. Uh, and, and these were snowfalls that were huge. You know, I understand, but they need to they need to they need to address these sidewalks. So uh, I think it would be a good time to get some letters out, especially the people on Main Street. We spent we spent thousands of dollars on the brick. We spent thousands of dollars on the street lights and stuff like that. Which are so, um, you know, just a, a letter reminding them of the sidewalk. Mr. President, if I could just respond. Sure. That. Yeah, I get a lot of talk, you know calls about this and. You know, people, you know, um, over the years and, you know, elected officials always wanting to respond to something. And this ordinance, there is an ordinance that's uh, on the books. It's unenforceable because some council 30, 35 years ago passed an ordinance that says that um, the property owners, whether they're the owner or the resident that lives there or a tenant, uh, is responsible for the removal of debris, including snow and ice, not only from the sidewalk, but from the curb and gutter as well. But when that was passed, nothing was passed with it. It's unenforceable. All right now, if you want to enforce an ordinance like that, then you're going to have to, this body is going to have to start having some very serious discussions about what it takes. So the role of the administration here is going to be that, you know, it's all about policy, process, people, pay for it. So if your policy is that you want snow removed, you're going to have to start answering questions like, so when does, the, when does it get triggered? Is it after an inch of snow, two inches of snow? How long does the snow have to remain before somebody decides to issue some type of what? We're going to do like we do with weeds and grass, where it's going to be more immediate. You have how many hours to remove it? Keep in mind that we're an 8 to 4.30 operation. So if the snowfall happens at 8 o'clock at night, what are you going to do about it? And that unlike weeds and grass, which is something that grows differently in different locales, grass at Mr. Osborne's house grows different than the grass at my house. He has more shade. I got more sun. I might water. He might not. But that's not the case with snowfall. It hits everybody at the same time, without discrimination, equally. Right. So that would require, and I hope that you're prepared to have that conversation. But there's a couple of ways we could do this. I, if I may, that you would have to issue citations to people, to businesses, to entities all across the city. Right. All at the same time. Right. And I think it's something we should look into because there's several different ways we could do this. The city could do it. We could get the city cannot do it because there's not personnel to do it. Okay. Wow. They could if you want to hire personnel to do it, that's part of the discussion. I agree. Policy or process. Private people outside pay for it. source. We could bill them. You know, there's different ways we could look at this. There, those are those are not. I respectfully disagree. Those are not feasible ways. It's like a fantasy, John. No. Uh, for people to go fantasy. out in an 18 inches of snowstorm and think that you're going to find somebody that's going to come in and do your do your sidewalks? Do you think aesthetics of the city is uh, year-round? Pardon me? Aesthetics of the city, how the city looks downtown. You think that's year-round? Sure. Judge our city? But it's the property owner's responsibility if they want to move it. It's a matter of how are you going to enforce it? Well, we could probably have a committee or some, some type of committee, but it's something we should look into. And it, it may come out being the same way it is now, or it could change. Yeah. That's the um, all right. Thank you, John. Um, I don't have anything new. I just wanted to make, basically say thank you to the street group. For, I think uh, what they did was incredible considering what happened. Um, I mean, it was what three straight days of just constant. They're still still doing things, but I mean, that's amazing to me. So hats off to those guys and uh, thank you. Um, so moving on to our meeting calendar. Um, well, final call for new business. Any other new business? Yep. Okay, moving on to the meeting calendar. Uh, February 14th is our next one, followed by February 21st. Uh, that if we're not having one then, that's President's Day, and then followed up by city council meeting on February 28th. Any questions about the calendar, comments? Uh, 
Shall we all wear pink next Monday? Shall I should be bringing yeah. candy? Okay. Yeah, we should all bring flowers and candy. Uh, game on. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.